Hi there. This is Anthony Williams. I'd like you to introduce you to the new book, Collaborative Computational Technologies for Biomedical Research, edited by myself and my co-editors, Sean Akins and Maggie Hupsey, and published by Wiley & Sons. While we're the lead editors, all of the authors either have extensive backgrounds in computational software for biomedical research, or they've done wet lab research for drug discovery. Many have worked in software companies, in pharmaceutical companies, or in consulting companies, and have the appropriate skills to educate the readers of this book. This book is part of the Wiley series on technologies for the pharmaceutical industries. And if you are interested in this book, Collaborative Computational Technologies for Biomedical Research, you may also be interested in these other books in the series. Computer Applications in Pharmaceutical Research and Development, Computational Toxicology, Risk Assessment for Pharmaceutical and Environmental Chemists, and Drug Efficacy, Safety and Biologics Discovery. Anyway, on with the description of the book. As editors, we had the idea for the book because collaborations in early drug discovery and medical device research is becoming increasingly used among large companies, startup biotechs, non-profit research labs, and government labs. The intention is hopefully to create greater insights and better results in these challenging times of reduced funding. Big science as embodied in the Human Genome Project and the International HapMap Project, and so on, represent very large-scale scientific collaborations. These are necessary as no single lab is big enough or financially resourced to perform the whole project. In Europe, there are many mid-scale collaborations funded by European Un Union Framework Grants. For example, the New Medicines for TB project includes approximately 20 different labs spread throughout the globe. It even includes a group at AstraZeneca in India, and they're all involved with researching tuberculosis. In addition, there are pre-competitive collaborations and public-private partnerships that offer new avenues to aid research and development. These represent quite complex collaborations and challenges for communication, and to ensure that a project is successfully completed. Drug discovery and development increasingly incorporates many internal and external collaborations throughout a project and requires tools for data capture and communication, as well as for tracking and planning. It is our view that scientists will be relying on computational applications to enable such collaboration, to facilitate communication among geographically separated scientists. They'll need to organize themselves into functional units and to collect and analyze the data they generate as well as share this data either securely or increasingly in an open manner with the scientific community. Data generation from high throughput biology and the computational modeling of complex systems involved in many of these projects is certainly creating a need for huge amounts of computing resources well beyond what many companies can afford to create and maintain. Computing and collaborating via the internet or the cloud as it's becoming increasingly known is now being used by companies faced with daunting computational requirements. This book is aimed at comprehensively discussing the state-of-the-art collaborative and computing techniques for the pharmaceutical industry and the present and future implications and opportunities to advance healthcare research. We use the structure of man methods machine to organize this book. This book tackles a real set of problems thoroughly from the human collaborative perspective, the man, the process and organizational structures to facilitate communications, the methods, and the data informatics and tools side, the machine. This book provides the reader with state-of-the-art practical advice and is very relevant to the activities of running a laboratory or a collaborative R&D project for pharma, biotech, and medical devices. In the first part, there are chapters about why we need collaborative technologies for drug discovery, getting people to collaborate, models for collaboration, pre-competitive collaboration, patterns behind large-scale collaboration, and the ethics of collaboration. Also, how people collaborate in chemistry and biology, and the intellectual property aspects of collaboration. We've put this section first because too often projects fail because of the human element. Only by understanding how people think and work together can a manager stave off the people problem that can lead to poor results and expensive failures. In 
section two, we have chapters on the methods and processes for collaborations. By methods and processes, we mean the governing means by which a collaboration is going to take place. For example, cloud computing is the means by which a company with minimal capital could tap into computing capacity without buying their own expensive grid computers. We also have case studies in this section, such as the Cancer Commons, GRIDS, and the Cancer Biomedical Informations Grid, or CA Big, as well as discussions around topics as ontologies, standards for such collaborative software, and how these methods can assist translational research. The third part of the book gets into the details of particular computational IT tools that can be used to enable the collaboration. These include electronic notebooks, public and web databases, and bioinformatics tools. The chapters cover new ideas such as open source drug discovery, using the cloud for hosting data, and collaborative bio and chem informatics tools. In our final section, we have chapters on emerging technologies such as open notebooks, the semantic web, and advanced visualization tools. We also have a perspective of where several of us think the future of collaborations facilitated by IT could lie. These are our views and perceptions, of course, and we welcome feedback when the book is published. We believe that collaboration between biomedical scientists will become increasingly important, and this book is therefore targeted at all levels in the biomedical research industry, from bench scientists to organizational heads. It will be important for all scientists to be aware of the available options for collaborations and the methods and tools available to facilitate them. Despite the fact that this domain is fast moving, we are confident that this book will become a valuable reference work for those interested in collaborative approaches, approaches to biomedical research for years to come. I'd like to leave you with some quotes that are used in the book forward and on the cover. Bryn Williams Jones commented that the time has come to fundamentally rethink how we handle the building of knowledge in biomedical sciences today. This book describes how the computational sciences have transformed into being a key knowledge broker, able to integrate and operate across divergent data types. Alf Bingham suggests that considering the present state the pharmaceutical industry finds itself in, the promise of innovative medicines for children and our children's children may well depend on finding new collaborative paradigms with attendant business models. The material for this genesis, though nascent, may well be found in these pages. My co-authors and I would also like to kindly acknowledge all of the authors who provided excellent contributions. We certainly believe that the final book is far greater than the sum of the parts. Thank you.